Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to Wild Arms 2. When we last left off, we descended Spiral Tower, crossed Glaive Le Gable, the Sea of Blue Mud, literally knocked on the door to the final do boss, at which point we then promptly gathered up the ultimate armor and went back out the way we came. The reason being is we have some unfinished business. That unfinished business is, of course, the optional bosses of this game, at which point uh, we are about to start fighting. So, let's go over some general preparations that you probably need to make before you start going against the bonus bosses. As you can see, I'm level 50. I, the lowest level I would say you need to be is level... 45-ish uh, higher is better obviously uh, I, I wouldn't go any lower than 45 before you started fighting the bonus bosses uh, I recommend getting up to level 50 because pretty much if you're level 50 when you start fighting the bonus bosses assuming you use a lucky card against every single one of them you will be strong enough to fight Ragu and Angle at the end of all of this uh, so that's one of the reasons why I'm level 50 also being level 50 means that you can open up with your level 2 spells for Tim and Lilka when you're using them in battles you don't have to build up FP a turn and then gar start attacking with high fire or high spark or uh, plasma tap or you know any of that Maribel still needs to build up a little FP because her level 2 spells actually cost 55 FP because they uh, actually hit all enemies on the screen, so they cost 55 FP. So, yeah. Now, uh, for Tim, skill-wise, you need to make sure that Loka knows... Let's see. You've got... Well, at this point, you should probably know all of Loka's spells. Uh, mostly for Lilka, her preparations revolve around moving around her crest E and S. For most of the bonus bosses, you're going to want height weapon on the crest E so that if, look, well, that's if you plan on using Brad. Uh, that way she can height weapon Brad the first turn and he can just immediately start punching with an elemental ring because most of the bonus bosses have an elemental weakness. Uh, the Crest S is something you're going to move around. For example, the first bonus boss we fight is weak to fire, so you want to take it off Saber and put it on Flame. Uh, there's a boss that's weak to... Uh, uh, let's see, there's one that's weak to Wind, so if you were going to do that, you put it on High Vortex. There's one that's weak to Earth, so you put it on High Break. Uh, pretty much, you know, stuff like that. For Tim, you need to learn, uh, for the most part, you should have most of his spells. Uh, I'm going to assume that you have first aid and all that other stuff. Uh, the spells you get from the High Guardians are not really required uh, to beat the bonus bosses. Full Hill is useful. You get that from Raftina. Let's see, you, you, do, you do need all of his... Uh, Elemental attacks. You've got to absolutely have Thanatos X and Arcana 13. Other than that, well, Tim really doesn't see a whole lot of use in the bonus bosses, especially the later bonus boss battles. For Brad, you need, of course, one of every elemental ring for his punching attacks. I don't really use Kanan. But having sparked Eagle Claw before this, ba uh, before you start, is good practice. Having at least Phalanx is pretty much required if you're going to use her in the in the battles. For Marivelle, you need to have. You don't have to go around and get all of her red powers because honestly, a lot of them are useless. But you need to have Sleep. Power Seal is good to have because there's a few bonus bosses that are weak to it. Uh, K 
Cancelor. Anti-Magic. Well, not Anti-Magic, excuse me. You need Sleep, Cancelor, Status Lock. Her level 2 spells, such as Cremation, Terror Break. And Guillotine. That's pretty much all you need from her. So as long as you have those, you'll be good. Let's see. For Ashley, you are going to want... Pretty much just make sure you keep the uh, Zephyr medium on him, and that's pretty much all you can do at the start here. Uh, as soon as you take down the first bonus boss, you're going to get an accessory that's pretty much going to stay on Ashley throughout most of the bonus bosses. As for items, you need uh, as many Mega Berries and full revives as you can get. Having some revive fruits is handy as well in case you run out of full revives. You need 99 big berries, 99 heal berries. Uh, the heal berries are mainly for healing up after the battles. Uh, that way you don't risk dropping your luck by staying in an inn. Make sure you get enough tiny flowers to raise everyone's luck up to best. This is really important for the last two bonus bosses, but it's also fairly important for Tim for one of the other bonus bosses. that I will get to here in a moment. Uh, you need at least one duplicator. Having a bunch of stat healing items is also good. You need 99 mini carrots or close. Uh, your full carrots, your ambrosias, it's just the stuff you've been saving throughout the game. You have to have the life orb. I recommend you move it up to the top of the uh, inventory list where you can actually you know, get to it pretty easily. You need nine lucky cards. I only have eight here, but you need nine lucky cards for the bonus boss. There's nine bonus bosses that you can get experience and gala from, so you need nine lucky cards. I'll go and get another lucky card here in a little bit. You can steal lucky cards from the uh, Red Barneys in the Crimson Castle where you, re you recruit Maravel. There's other places to get them, but I like going there because it's an indoor place and you could go in and uh, pretty much just use my mic over and over and over again. And the Red Barneys appear fairly regularly. I mean, it's not like a rare thing. Tiny flowers, if you need more of those, you can steal them from the rat monkeys in the telepath tower. You can also steal them, which is another reason why I like going to... Uh, the Crimson Castle. You can steal them from... There's an enemy in there. You can steal them from... I, their name escapes me. They look like zombies. Uh, let's see, you need the Viper Fang. And you're going to need your Crest Caps. Now, depending on uh, the fight, it changes on what you want your Crest Caps on. For most of the fights, you're going to want to keep them on high revives. Uh, and have one for hype weapon if you're going to use Brad that way he can hype weapon himself if Lilka is busy doing something else the first turn or it's good to have one in reserve in case Brad like accidentally dies I find Brad to be a really wonderful character to use for most of the bonus bosses due to the fact that he has such high HP even without the elemental protection of the rings for example, there's a boss, uh, there's several bosses that uh, pretty much everyone else has to equip an elemental ring to survive the spells that they cast against you. Brad can pretty much all the way to the end, I'm talking even, even against Ragu and Angle, he can just sit there and take it square in the chin and keep kicking. So he doesn't necessarily have to have the elemental ring protection that everyone else has to have. That makes him, I find, very good to have around. So, uh, like I said, make sure you're level at least 45. I recommend being up to level 50. It's not hard to get to level 50. Uh, now, let me talk about one other thing, and then I'll go over how I got to level 50. Uh, it's a slightly weird kind of method. Uh, 
the most accepted method of leveling this game is to go to one of two places. There's an island. You can't really see it. It's kind of to the kind of to the west there. Uh, it's kind of upward. See that island in the middle of the ocean there next to CLJ? Well, you go there and there's an enemy if you use Tim's Divide on. You pretty much... Uh, it turns into a fairly difficult monster that's almost a boss in its own right. If you kill this boss, you get 30,000 experience and a fairly sizable chunk of Gela. If you use a lucky card, you get 60,000 experience. You can also get the same effect from a different monster. You get the same monster appear by using Divide against a different monster in Ashley's starting dungeon. Now, if, if you want to look up how to do that, I'll, I'll let you look up how to do it on your own because it's fairly common knowledge. Uh, and Actually, I need to go teleport orb, hovercraft. Actually, no, I meant to teleport to Valerie Chateau, then my hovercraft, excuse me. For how I level up. I like to level up this way because it serves kind of three purposes, me leveling up this way. I'm killing three birds with one stone. You may also notice I have an absurd amount of money. Well, that is because of this method as well. And that uh, 500,000 Gela I have is after I've maxed all of my arms out. And bought a stupidly large amount of stuff. Now, uh, you could also do this over next to Spiral Tower. It doesn't matter. This uh, area here with the Lost Garden has the same enemies. So what you're looking for here is the Aegean. You'll know you're fighting them because they always surprise you. Either getting a back attack or a uh, fighting alone or just to surprise you, whatever. Anyway. So to, uh, what you want to do is you want to kill one of the Aegeons. Uh, this is also, by the way, one of the enemies that Maravel learns a red power from. They teach Booster, which is actually a fairly useless red power because it berserks you. Now, and uh, you do want to use a lucky card if you have some spares to do this. Now pretty much you just want to defend. Until this guy, if he'll do it, they do it fairly regularly. They'll do one of three things. They'll either regular attack you, cast booster, or do a move called Summon Hero. And Summon Hero is what we want them to do. When he casts Summon Hero, he'll will he will summon one of I think five uh, different basically Aegean Power Rangers. There's like five different colors. Uh, and at which point you want to just start killing them. Like, for example, uh, basically this is how I learned all of Tim's spells. I would go in, equip him with the appropriate medium. Let's say I wanted to learn Bold Lance. You have to kill 99 enemies to do that. Well, basically I see that this guy's fire elemental. That means he's weak to water. Where is it? Submerge, so defend, defend. And pretty much you just do this continuously over and over and over and over and over again until I got my 99 kills. The Aegeons don't have a lot of HP. The Aegeon, excuse me, the Aegeon uh, Rangers don't have so much HP that Tim or Kanan cannot kill them with one move. So basically you do this until you just defend until he summons another ranger then you kill it again and you do it and uh, I did this three times uh, pretty much to learn all of the spells 
and I got enough experience to raise me up from like 44 to 50 by doing it three times. And the first time I didn't even get any, well, credit for because I accidentally ran away after 45 minutes. But anyway, uh, those Aegeons are great targets to learn Tim spells. Just pay attention and make sure uh, you know you're learning. You're, you're paying attention, and you know when he does learn something, you actually change mediums. I think Brad has an elemental ring on. They absorb all elements. All right, uh, fine, we'll take the ring off so I can end this. Let's see. As you can see, he always summons the same color in one battle. Uh, it also makes it kind of difficult to, it makes it a pain in the butt to complete your beast area because you have to, of course, uh, Instigate a fight with an Aegeon, and then once you get an Aegeon alone, you have a one in whatever chance, five, I guess, of getting the right color. But anyway, that's how I leveled. Uh, about 45 minutes will net you, like, 200,000 experience. It's ridiculous. Uh, and then more money than you could ever spend. And I like doing it this way. It's a lot more passive than uh, going and searching for the other enemy I was talking about that gives you 60,000 experience. The Aegons are a lot more common, and they also. There's really no threat of them killing you, like, at all. And you can do other things while you, you know. Farm the the Aegean Rangers for experience and Gela, and because they continuously respawn, they make good targets also for uh, Kanan to spark her eagle claws and such. If you do not already have, them. Uh, if you look down in the description down there below, there's a link to a much earlier version. If I can remember to put the link in there, yeah. uh, there's a, there'll be a link to an earlier version of way to uh, spark Kanan's abilities uh, by a guy named Ryzen. He posted that video up there and someone has brought that to my attention. So, it's, that's a good way to do it as well, but uh, I'm much too far in the game to even contemplate doing that. Also, uh, in the description you will find a list of where to get the red powers. Uh, it's kind of a modified list that I put together. Uh, a lot of the information on game facts and stuff is uh, very, not necessarily inaccurate. They're accurate, just very, very vague. And uh, so that down there is basically a little more zeroed in. Like, you know, you'll go somewhere and they'll say, you get this red power in the uh, ray point flam, is what, what it'll say. But what they don't tell you is the enemy only appears after the save point. So, uh, you know, more specific things like that is what my list down there has. So, yeah. Uh, one last thing to point out is I actually had some problems with my PS3. It uh, yellow lighted on me. And uh, so, long story short, lost my save data that I had on my hard drive. I had a spare save data on my PSP, but it was all the way back at the beginning of disc one. So I had to recruit, you know, Maribel and all that over again. Uh, one thing you may notice if you go back and look is she has less HP. The reason being is I recruited her and didn't immediately go and get her up HP. In fact, she was like level 42 before I even remembered to do that. So yeah, it was like right before I went into the spiral tower that I even remembered to give her her uh, spend her skill points. So. And that, it's not really good. Uh, it's not going to really affect 
anything. So, anyway, uh, this pretty much concludes this video here. And I will see you next time on Wild Arms 2, where we will start off taking on our first optional boss. I'll see you then. If I can find the right button to stop recording.